Hello everybody. It's good to see you out there. I'm Naghme Rezai. I'm happy to be presenting Cosmo Eater's research study on the world's unity of existence. Linguistic studies, in their interdisciplinary engagement with philosophy, sociocultural studies, phenomenology, natural science, and neuroscience, have not come up with any long-standing theories in response to fundamental questions about the origin and evolvement of human language. How did it all begin? How does it continue? How did human beings evolve to become the only species on Earth in charge of the faculty of language? If it is a matter of evolution, why did the mutation that caused the formulation of language capability in the human brain not take place elsewhere and in animals? Linguists disagree about the origin and evolvement of languages. However, they agree that any hypothesis about the origin, formation, emergence, and evolution of language is just one more assumption with the same unbridgeable gaps between what we know and what we cannot know. Neither the engagements of the theory of evolution nor the advancements of neuroscience have led to a turning point in the history of our knowledge of human languages. Language theories are often described as scenarios for the emergence of language with a wide range of epistemological grounds from Descartes' mind-body dualism, which attributes the mastery of languages to human soul, to Saussure's reading of signs and structuralism, which scrutinizes language as a system, to Chomsky's theory of universal grammar grounded in biology but looking beyond. Language has often been proposed as an adaptation through natural selection, but language scholars have not come up with any justification for this mutation's uniqueness to the human species. Within the context of cognitive science, the question of the origin of language has been marginalized because of the lack of evidence and objectivity. The ambiguities of languages' emergence and evolution are so far beyond natural science's actual domain that they are routinely discarded as mysteries or matters of metaphysics in favor of more feasible methodologies that investigate language development in sociocultural contexts like social interactionist theory or behaviorist theory. Noam Chomsky expresses that the basic questions about language acquisition have never received any satisfactory answers. He has shared his doubts about the ability of current studies to provide better answers for these fundamental questions. The hard problems were not solved, rather abundant, as science turned to its more modest post-Newtonian course Within the range of feasible inquiry, there is plenty of work to be done in understanding mental aspects of the world, including human language, Chomsky asserts. Chomsky's theory of universal grammar continues to be one of the most influential narratives in language theory, although it has been criticized and even doubted as pseudoscience because of not being falsifiable and the inaccessibility of the language acquisition device in the study of brain, and thus the inapprovability of its existence. There is a gap in his theory when approached from biology's perspective. Chomsky is not conservative about how sharply understanding declines beyond the simplest systems of nature, in his own words. His awareness of the problem of consciousness as the hard problem, the one that is not within our grasp, speaks of the gap in language theory and calls for the gap filler. This study 
introduces Muhammad Ali Tahiri's theory of consciousness, T consciousness, as the gateway to the origin of language in the human mind. T consciousness stands for the non-material and non-energetic constituent of the universe, the third fundamental element which generates both matter and energy. Science fact, an emerging field of scientific studies based on Tahiri's theory is investigating the existence of T-consciousness through the application of T-consciousness fields in multidisciplinary areas including physics, chemistry, and biology. The phase-based studies of T-consciousness fields in science fact sketch four preliminary phases for investigating the existence and effects of T-consciousness fields in applied science. The existence of T-consciousness and the trajectory of the approval of its existence by research results will enable humanities scholars to draw on consciousness not as an evasive concept which is not within our grasp, but as a turning point in the humanities discourse that extends our understanding beyond the systems of nature. This study argues that T-consciousness theory bridges a major gap between what we know about the human brain and what we do not know about language acquisition. The study of the interrelation between human T-consciousness and the cosmic consciousness network in Tahiri's theory provides new explanations of the emergence of language in human mind. According to Tahiri's theory, human beings have not invented the language but have detected it. We argue that the emergence of language from existence to being is a revelation, and the multiplicity of languages with their internal harmonies and unison is readable as externalizations of a unified source text. We conceptualize this phenomenon as the world's unity of existence. The words unity of existence, Vahdat Vajud Kalame, conceptualized as a unified unmanifest, the untextualized text, of which every other text is inherently a transcription or an adaptation, and each emerging language a revelation. This theory can initiate border crossing dialogues in linguistics phenomenology, hermeneutics, and theory of intertextuality, and a diversifying approach to the origin of the text as well as the origin of the language. Tahiri's theory is expected to initiate a dialogue with Chomsky's theory, as it provides new evidence to revisit the concept of universal grammar, bridge the gap in UG theory, and go beyond its limits. In bridging the gaps between studying the brain and understanding the mind, Tahiri's theory develops a software-oriented discourse, according to which the innate language acquisition device is definable as language software, grounded in mind, operating in brain, and programmable by T-consciousness. The fact that the software cannot be detected in the hardware of the human brain, according to this approach, does not mean it does not exist. In this theoretical narrative, the language software's primary activation in the human species, generally described as an unexplained mutation, correlates with human beings coming to awareness of one's existence, the T-consciousness surfacing as self-T-consciousness, developing language ability and self-consciousness as two unique attributes of human species on the path of evolution. According to linguistics, there are over 6,000 languages and dialects in the world, with constant variations and no actual borders in between. Chomsky explains that languages and dialects gradually shift or dissolve into one another if you move from one geographical point to the other one in two neighboring states or countries. Thus, we cannot easily map the territories of languages with solid lines based on the geopolitical borders of so-called national languages. This study draws on the concept of the unibody, 
تن واحده این تاهریز تیوری تو اکسپلین دت دی مالتیپلیسیتی اف هیومن لنگویجز این دی ریکرینگ پترنز اینترنال هارمونیز اند دی لوجیک انتر ریلیشنز این تیلز یونیتی این دی تی کانشسنس لول وی دیسکرایب دیس فنومنون از دی یونیفاید بادی اف لنگویجز Chomsky's call for an eventual unification in the study of language and other human faculties is echoed in the prospects of Tahiri's concept of Farakol Negari, supraholism based on the theory of T consciousness. How unification might take place, or whether it can be achieved by human intelligence or even in principle, we will not know until we know, Chomsky asserts. T-consciousness theory responds to this call for unification, inviting a dawn of the new age of knowledge. Thanks for being with us. Please do not hesitate to get in touch with the Cosmo Intel Center with any questions, concerns, or if you are interested in cooperating with future research.